Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Scribbles with Jonathan. I'm your host, Jonathan Rector. Uh, you can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And real quick, what this is, is going to be a sketch, obviously, <laughs> taken all the way to completion of um, a Halloween character, I suppose. And, um, you know, a really quick backstory. A uh, buddy of mine, uh, Bob Leonard, uh, he had messaged me over Twitter, and he has this really cool idea, and I guess he's been doing it for a while, and, you know, once I tell you the idea, there's no way I could turn it down, um, and what, what he, I guess he's been doing is, um, for I don't know how many Halloweens, he gets, uh, you know, a bunch of sketches done uh, from other artists, or maybe himself, and then he gets, like, a little mini-comic, which could be about eight pages or so, you know, nothing drastic, and then you just fold it up, staple it yourself, you know, and then uh, on Halloween, you know, he just starts handing it out to kids. Uh, with the candy, and I thought, you know, that's a that's too good of an idea, um, you know, something I think a lot of us artists, you know, there's certain things that some of us like to do, and some of the things that we feel like we have to do, and this here, the idea behind it anyway, it seemed like something that I, I would definitely want to do, and you know, a lot of people talk about drawing and not wanting, don't do work for free and stuff like that, and it's not just because it's kids, you know, that you're going to do it for free or something like that, but uh, for me, I don't know, I just know if I was a kid, maybe, you know, when you're getting some really cool artwork, and I, when you're a kid, I don't even know if you know what cool artwork is, uh, I think that's something you find out down the road, what you like and your style preference and all that good stuff, but you know, uh, you know, I always wanted candy and stuff, but who knows, if we can get more people into uh, art, that's fantastic stuff. So, as you can see real quick, I was, at the very beginning, I was just doing some quick sketches just to get some ideas of something that I would want it to do. And I was very fortunate enough to get something done right away at the beginning that, uh, you know, I'd take all the way to completion. And, you know, uh, this is supposed to be for, like, a coloring book, so I don't want to render too much. I want to leave a lot of open lines, some nice thick lines, and you'll see that once we start throwing the contour line over top. Um, that way the kids can go over there, and if they are coloring it, you know, they can go in there with a marker, something really fun. So he's got like these tentacle things. I'm not really sure what the heck this kind of monster thing dude guy is. But uh, I figure if I can make it as fun for me to draw, hopefully it comes out as well. And other people that are, or the, the kids or whoever, the parents maybe, <laughs> if they're coloring it, they might enjoy it as well. So um, normally, this is actually something right here where you're seeing me draw the hair. Normally I don't draw the hair with this pressure sensitive brush. I'll use the um, three pixel dead no, no, no pressure sensitivity or anything on there. But uh, when it's fur, I find you know it's a little bit easier for myself if I just start throwing in the actual uh, variations in the the hair. It makes it look more lively as opposed to doing three pixels and then you know putting line weight over top of it. Here he's kind of got horns or something. I don't really know what the heck these are. Just putting some shapes there just to make it look like they're actually you know in perspective. Again, working more on the hair and all that good stuff. Uh, I did notice I was using the pen tool. I, I believe I do use it again, so I'll talk a little bit about that once we get to that again. And here I'm just adding some more things, some more fur. You know, give them a little, like, mane or something. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so we started to look a little fun, have a little fun with this guy here. Um, okay, so the pen tool, what I'm using here, and I don't normally do this around the hand or other areas like that, but sometimes you get, like, long... Let's say you got, like, a sword or a weapon or something. Um... I would highly recommend looking on YouTube, and you know, I, I, it's not that I haven't found a lot myself, but for comic book art or illustration, I haven't seen too much being talked about it, so I, I probably should do a quick little video about the pen tool, um, and kind of showing paths as well. So I'm going to make a little note of that, uh, and hopefully address it for you guys, a little instructional video for you guys on that, but definitely in the meantime, look online for how to learn the pen tool, especially in Photoshop here. Uh, it's pretty powerful. It'll help you big time so you don't have to redraw straight lines all the time. Um, unless that's the style you're going for, then knock yourself out. If you like a little bit of jaggy, jaggy lines in there or, you know, make it feel non or, or as organic as possible uh, and you're not using the pen tool. But uh, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, here you can see what I was doing again with the pen tool, trying to work on that tail. It really wasn't working out. So I just freehand the shape. And then if you go control, if you make that shape on a new layer, and then once it's done, control, I think it's what is it, control and then click inside the box on the layer that you just made it'll highlight the selection which is that black shape you just made and then I go up to I believe it's uh, image select modify something like that and then I shrink it down to about three pixels which is the three pixel dead line brush that I'm using and then it'll f I, you can fill it with white or you could delete it like I did um, and what's really cool about that is it lets you make all kinds of things you know like ropes I've talked about um, tails in that case um, here working on the bag a little bags of candy that this monster thing's going to be carrying. 
and then just you know always make things on different layers especially if it's stacked up like that that way you can always go over top of it and um, and erase what's behind it so here I'm just looking for a font um, that looked okay so just copying and pasting it around just adjusting it it's playing around so it doesn't look too plain you know uh, usually edit warp will get that so here we go um, contour line I, th I forgot I think I went pretty thick with this one almost a 10 and this is probably <laughs> the boring part of the video here um, where it's essentially just tracing everything and um, as you can see the contour line and I, I do this to this day I never add a contour line around here um, I just feel like it looks weird it looks too chunky um, so I usually skip it and uh, you know if I have to if I have to do a contour layer to make a um, that white fill layer behind it so I can move the character around hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about um, I'll just use like a one pixel uh, brush with white again those are other things that I could probably address in another video so yep yeah, just going around everything um, and essentially I could leave it at this and I think more than enough people you know kids especially if they were to draw this they're not gonna worry about the little details um, and I probably should have left it but you know anybody out there that enjoys drawing you know they get to a certain stage and you just want to go and for me it's always uh, a race in a way to get to this right here because now I can make a new layer and just start filling blacks like that going right here starting to add some line weight and all that <laughs> the fun stuff and you know just kinda of deciding on how I wanted the eyes to look I want them to be friendly you know even though he's a monster I don't want parents to look at it and get scared and and you know I'm not gonna get into the whole monsters and how what kids should be looking at like zombies with brain chunks hanging out and stuff. I know what I liked as a kid, and I really like that stuff. Now that I'm older, I'm not too fond of looking at big chunky zombies with brains and stuff kind of hanging out. Freaks me out a bit. But I remember as a kid, I loved that stuff. So play it safe, I guess. Um, since this isn't something that I'm doing 100%, there are other artists involved. Um, and this is, I don't want to say it's charity doing this kind of thing, but it's its fun being able to work on a project, something like this. And it's not really a project. It's just a sketch. And it's like, you know, you could take... 20 minutes out of your day to do something like this and you know it's pretty cool I think so when, on Halloween when kids are coming up hopefully get some candy and I don't know how many kids are still doing Halloween seems like it's dying off all the time but uh, I'm going to try it this year too hand out some candy and then a uh, little sketchbooks for these kids see what happens so pretty much getting to the completed part here I didn't add too much shading or rendering um, because again I want to leave areas for the kids to actually color in so just add some quick debris a signature and a ghost. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care. Keep reading comics. Keep making comics. And we'll talk to you soon.